way back in 1800, Robert Fulton, the inventor of the steamboat, designed the first practical submarine. In 1898, America was the first nation to include undersea craft in its naval forces, and since that time has maintained a subsurface fleet equal to any in the world. Besides the intricacies of surface navigation, the subcommander must be versed in the course of undersea currents and the topography of the ocean floor before he dives his ship. These vessels don't spend as much time underwater as is commonly supposed. They normally only submerge when attacking or escaping an enemy ship, when scouting in hostile zones or when avoiding a storm. In general, her decks are dry, for her cruising operations are always on the surface, under the power of her oil-fed diesel engine. But this is no yacht club cruise. It will be their objective to locate and sink by torpedo fire a target ship somewhere in this vicinity. As the general order prepared to submerge is given, the crews stand to their posts, for the quarry has been sighted. Swiftly, methodically, with no panic or confusion, they carry out the precautions that make her watertight, and then on to their battle assignments in the electric innards of the diving boat. Last to leave the bridge, the captain secures the watertight hatch and descends the conning tower ladder. When all is shipshape below decks, the order to submerge is given. The oil-fed diesel engines are switched off and the power replaced by that of huge storage batteries. The diesels require an air supply to operate, and so electric motors are always used when submerged. They are slower, but are silent and require no oxygen. Valves are open permitting seawater to enter huge ballast tanks, weighing the ship down. The speed with which the water is allowed to enter controls the rate of vertical descent. The boat is kept level by balancing the water in port and starboard ballast tanks, and with the aid of stabilizing pins attached to the outside of the hull. At periscope depth, which is about 15 feet, the submarine cautiously approaches its objective. Every man is ready and alert at his post. For here is one job that calls for split-second timing and an almost automatic response to commands. The periscope is the eye of the submarine. Without its complicated series of prisms and reflectors, the boat is blind and must rely on sound to locate adjacent ships. But their quarry is only a few thousand yards away, and the crew of 70, each one a perfect example of physical fitness and emotional control, go about their navigational routine as though they were running a donkey engine in a brickyard. Only the snap and dispatch of their performance betrays the supercharged tenseness in the air. The crosshairs on the periscope lens and the calibrated dial set the exact position of the target. In the torpedo room, the tubes are loaded and ready. A final checkup, the sub is aimed directly at the surface craft. The order is to fire. direct hits. Upon the order to surface, intricate machinery is set in motion, deflecting the outside fin so that the ship noses upwards. At the same time, powerful jets of compressed air will blow the water ballast from the forward tanks to lighten the bow. As the sea water is forced out of the remaining tanks, the submarine continues its upward progress. Almost as soon as the conning tower breaks water, and while her decks are still awash, the crew is on deck to man the rapid-fire gun. For besides conducting a torpedo attack, they must be able to defend themselves if they are forced to, or if they should be surprised while on the surface. Soon 
soon the day's exercises will draw to an end and they'll head for port. Sailing on the sea and beneath its surface is a strenuous and exacting life, but it's thrilling too. For the same romantic urge that inspired man to put a motor on wings and fly, inspired him to fashion a hull that could submerge at will and cruise the forgotten trails of sunken continents. The men that ride and guide these ships are a hardy lot, hand-picked and rigorously trained. But their post is more than a job. It's a career of adventure and high ideals dedicated to the service of their country. Mess is still the favorite indoor sport for those not on watch, with cribbage a close second. While 40 Winks is always popular. And so, homeward bound with America's undersea men of war. The daring submariners who draw her first line of defense through the waves as well as on it. The submarine service of the United States Navy.